Okay. This, this is CHSR 97.9 FM here in Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada, and you're listening to Python's Paradise, and this is your host, Greg Gilbert, a.k.a. the Python Hyena. And you know, folks, I can't get two girls here in this city to look twice at me. But, you know, in L.A., I think they're much easier going because I got two of the loveliest ladies in the movie industry on the phone with me. And this, this is the best part. I had them on last year, and they liked me so much they came back. <laughs> so that's a message to all you Fredericton girls. <laughs> <laughs> we are celebrating the 40th anniversary of Bobby Joe and the Outlaw, and I got the two of the lovely ladies that were part of that movie. I have Belinda Belansky and Mary Lynn Ross. How you do, ladies? Hi. 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 <laughs> well, this is such an honor, you know, to have you two on. Thank you. Yeah. You know, before we get to Bobby Joe, um, Belinda, I, I must say, I um, noticed you get a few anniversaries this year. I do. Oh, yes, I do, actually. Yes. Yes. That. I don't know the, the years of which they are, but yes, I think Piranha just had an anniversary. Uh, no, that was 1978. Now, wait, it had a 35-year anniversary, I think, didn't it? Yeah. Okay, so which uh, ones are you talking about? Let's find out. Well, uh, the howling is thirty-five years old this year. Oh, it's the howling that's thirty-five. Okay. And by the way, I want to thank you for that lovely autograph picture you sent me. Oh, you're welcome. Now that that had that that werewolf with his mouth open almost to your face. Now did that werewolf take a tic tac before he did that? <laughs> You know, we were so happy that, that Rob finally finished The Werewolf, um, and it was, what, three months or four months after we had finished wrapping the film. Uh, so really, you know, all of my close-ups were without a werewolf. And uh, by the time we finally did see the werewolf, I didn't care how far it was away from me. I was just <laughs> thrilled to finally know what it was I was running from all that time, do you know? Yeah, well, The Howling is 35 years old, and I know we talked about that extensively when I had you on. It would have been, uh, I think it was September 27th, 2015, I had you on last. Oh. And... Um, okay. Another film, couple of films you've got the anniversaries on. Uh, you were busy in 1976 when I turned four because uh, you also had um, Cannonball. Oh my gosh, okay. Yes, I did. Any last little thoughts about David Carradine? Oh, I had so much fun on Cannonball, but of course it was Paul Bartel directing, and Paul is, you know, an, an, an entity unto himself, I say. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and, uh, Everybody was on that set. I mean, it was David Carradine, Bobby Carradine, Bill, oh my God, Bill McKenney. Everybody was there. It was quite a cast of an eclectic cast, shall we say. In fact, even Joe Dante was in that movie, okay? Yeah, I noticed you developed a talent for, um, uh, what was it you swiped off the car? Um, <laughs> oh, the I fan do? belt, the fan belt. <laughs> I take a fan belt. <laughs> <laughs> you stole the fan belt. It's been a long time since I've seen this. I actually take a fan belt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then the other film that you've got that's celebrating 40 years is uh, a film that you shot up here in Canada because you. I remember you telling me you guys had a hard time dealing with the snow. Yeah, food of the gods. <laughs> yeah, those giant rats. Those giant rats, which, of course, you know, were big, puffy make-believe puppet heads, you know, basically. But they were brilliantly made by Bob Berman. Yeah. And, of course, you know, uh, you both did, of course, Bobby Joe and the Outlaw, which um, I saw last year. I um, I got a chance to see it. Um, uh, would you say the inspiration for that film was uh, Bonnie and Clyde? I would think so. <laughs> That's what I always thought. Yeah. Well, the first time I caught wind of Bobby Joe and the Outlaw, it was within a film that I really like that Mary Lynn Ross was in called Class of 1984, where, of course, we got that scene in the apartment where 
Timothy Van Patten as Peter Stegman is watching television before the teacher shows up. And of course, what's on the television? Bobby Joe and the Outlaw. And um, I never knew this. Mary Lynn, did you know all this? I, I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> the, remember the scene, Mary Lynn, where um, uh, Perry King shows up and his mom is it? It's the one scene that um, Peter Stegman's mom is in, uh, Timothy Van Patten. And she oh, comes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, um, Timothy Van Patten was watching Bobby Joe and the Outlaw. I'll be John. Did Mark Lester also direct that film? Yeah. Yes, he did. Oh, both of them. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's where Joe just did put, put a clip from The Howling in a Hawaii Five O that he was directing. Maybe he got that from Mark. Could be. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> That's great. I love it. There you go. By the way, Mary Lynn, I've done three interviews from class of 1984. I had you and I've, I had Lisa Lang was on and she's coming back on at some point. Um, I've been in touch with her and Stefan Arngrim, who played Drugstore, uh, one of the gangsters. So uh, I've had a lot of luck with uh, class of 84 and because it's Canadian, I have to celebrate right, it. And they're all Canadians. Uh, that was a real interesting uh, twist on that film because I don't know if I shared this story with you about becoming a, a, a Canadian before we shot the film because my I became a landed immigrant, which allowed me to work in Canada. And I had relatives there, and what happened was they, they were, because as you know, I executive produced that film as well, and they were saying, you now cannot bring in uh, a third American because we need a Canadian that goes in on the billing of the first three stars. Well, they didn't know I was going to be in the movie, playing the lead, uh, you know, elderly woman, which was, a, you know, a young pregnant woman. But uh, what happened was when we got down to negotiating and we're sitting in a room and they're telling us we can't bring in uh, another American, they said, well, of course we can. Mary Lynn's playing the part, but she's Canadian, and they didn't know it. And so it became uh, kind of a coup for us. And actually a coup for the Canadians because it ended up making a lot of money for everybody. And it was, uh, so I don't know if that makes sense to you, but uh, there's a lot of regulations when you're shooting across the border, even though we're so close. Where did you guys shoot? In Canada, in Toronto. Oh, in Toronto. That's yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of a little tidbit that uh, it was an amazing moment on everybody's faces. I wish I had a photo of that. It was like, oh, <laughs> we didn't know we apologized, right? I anyway. had no idea. So you're Canadian, huh? Well, my family, my, my family was living in Montreal, but I landed in Toronto. And the day I landed, it was an amazing day. There was all these fireworks going on, and I thought, oh, my gosh. I took it personally. I love this. What a greeting. It turned out it was like it was your national day. What is it, uh, July 1st? July 1st, have, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we have July 4th. So being who I am, I was dancing around. Yeah, I was really celebrating with everyone. <laughs> do, you, do, you know, do you two know where I'm located in New Brunswick? I realize. I just, when you said it earlier on the broadcast, I went, oh, my gosh. He's in New Brunswick. <laughs> yes, and the word I have for you, you people, do we call you Bruns? How do we say Brunswickians? Brunswickians, I guess. <laughs> I <live> Brunswickians. <laughs> I have one word. Burr. I better get on my fur coat. Uh, Hold up there. Well, the fall weather is is coming in. In fact, it's interesting because um, um, Lisa Langwa's manager has um, sent me a lot of clients to interview. And he asked me recently, you know, to take a couple pictures for him of the, the fall leaves, you know, which I haven't done yet because I need to take something uh -huh. good. Yep. So they usually get all kinds of like rainbows of colors. Uh, but I got to get just the right photos if I'm going to do that. But, um, Too bad Belinda's not there. She's brilliant on them. I just saw her 
Oops, I don't know if I can mention it. You can, you can, you can. Oh, yeah, please. I just saw one of the most brilliant photo books I've ever seen, and it's Belinda's Secret Life when she was a, a, an actress where she toured with the top uh, musicians in the world for causes. Let her tell you about it. I mean, I... I am so blown away <laughs> by by coming here and, and getting getting to see this uh, before it, I saw the demo book and it is beyond the, beyond words. So please share some of it, Belinda. I had the fortune of being best friends with a man named Donald Gooch, and Gooch, what, as he was known, was the sound engineer for Crosby, Stills, and Nash, along with multiple other people, Diana Ross, all kinds of other people. And, uh, and Gooch, whenever the CSN would play somewhere, he'd say, hey, would you drive up to me with me? They're playing in Santa Barbara. I don't want to drive all the way up there by myself. So, you know, I would drive with him. And being a person who doesn't sit still very well and being sort of an avid person who likes to shoot pictures, I, I would bring my camera, my Nikomat FT2, and my 90-millimeter lens, and I would... Shoot, I would always have a backstage pass or a press pass. And, you know, I just shot. I never showed anyone my pictures. I spent 30 years taking pictures, and I never showed them to anybody. I was kind of this classic case photographer. And um, and Gooch kept telling me, you've got to make a book. These pictures are, are amazing. And I'm like, are you kidding? I was standing next to people like Henry Diltz and, you know, some really Lynn Goldsmith and some really major rock and roll photographers. And I did not feel you know, anywhere close to them. I felt like an actor, you know, who was hanging out and here in between jobs. <laughs> anyway, 30 years later, um, uh, my friend Gooch passed away. And I started thinking about what he said because he asked me and asked me and asked me. And then I decided, you know, I'm going to look at my slides. I started looking at these tiny little slides and they were beginning to mildew. And I said, man, this is now or never. I better do something about it. So I hired someone to digitize all my slides, and I started seeing them large on my computer, going, oh, my God, this is an archive of 30 years of rock and roll, mainly all-cause concerts, because that's mainly what CSN did with Jackson Brown and Bonnie Raitt and all these people. Wow. And I had the fortune of shooting it. And a lot of these people aren't even with us anymore, and it is really... It's, a, it's important, I think, this book. These are people who gave their time and their energy and their hearts and their songs. Even if the concert wasn't a cause concert, their songs were about causes. All of these people were writing about causes. It was a period of time that, you know, that, that had a heartbeat to it, you know, which, uh, quite frankly, I don't think exists any longer. And, and I, I put this book together to dedicate it to my friend Gooch, and I'm trying to get it published. I'm looking for a publisher. Oh, I hope you do. Yeah, that would be great. Like, yeah, that's going to be oh, a big. Yeah, I wanted seller. to share it with Mary Lynn because she's so innovative and has so many brilliant ideas, and she's always got her fingers in a million different pots and pans. And <laughs> you never know by you know, you mention it to somebody, and the next thing, some she mentions it to somebody, and things happen. You know, so. Well, I've got yeah, both. Yeah, the coolest thing, I may yeah. have my finger in pots and pans, but I can tell you, cooking isn't my pleasure. Oh, I know, but you're a magician of your own right, my dear. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I, and that's why they call me the Beverly Hill Shaman. There you go. <laughs> Which is an oxymoron. And, of course, I don't know how many of your listeners are watching YouTube, but I've done over 340 YouTube videos, and we're now doing, I'm so excited, uh, YouTube has done something called Unlock the Space, meaning when you get enough viewers and so forth, they let you come and shoot in their uh, production studios, oh, nice. which are loaded with the top cameras. I'm going to, and I have a surprise for Belinda, I can't say it on the air because well, I haven't okay. told her yet. But, <laughs> you know, the prizes should go first to the person it needs to that's hear. That's okay. That's but, okay. Uh, aside from that, uh, we're now scripting shows and doing webisodes. And I'm real excited because even though I've executive produced major films and starred in them and played around and wrote them, doing this new media is amazing. 
because it it's the wild west now where you can just get in there and do what it is that your heart tells you without waiting for a major studio. So I'm in my biggest play field, and mm-hmm. and, and and another thing, Belinda, I I, I want to get it out. I, you know, we know about our movies, but I want to talk about our play field that we're in. And I just shared one of mine because I am with millennials, and I am like a poster child. They adore me because I bring in the experience, but not. It's it's a different experience because I'm growing. Too, I'm growing with these young people and having the ball of my life. And Belinda's growing too. She's doing something else. I listen. I I have to say this, Belinda. Your artwork that you're doing now, and you've been posting it on Facebook, is exquisite. And you shared with me your secret story about when you were a little kid doing it. Oh, please tell everybody. <laughs> You know, my mother would find me, you know, my, my mom would put my sister and I to bed, and then she'd come in a few hours later, make sure we were covered up and everything, you know, tuck us in, back in, and I would never be in my bed. Uh, she, and then she'd go about trying to find me, and I can always remember hearing my mother saying, Linda, Linda, always calling me, <laughs> like my whole life, and I would never answer her. I was always hiding somewhere, usually in the closet. Or we had this staircase that had this little area underneath it. Or, you know, I always had my little spots that I would go to. And she would eventually find me in there. And she was, what are you doing? And I'd say, I'm drawing. What are you drawing? I'd say, I'm drawing lightning bugs. And I used to always sit there and draw these lightning bugs. And <laughs> I, I don't know. I guess I was always a closet case artist or something, <laughs> along with photographer. <laughs> Well, I've seen your postings of your artwork, and I think your your artwork is exquisite. I think it's gorgeous. I sh- I often share when I see them. I share them on uh, my page as well. Oh, so sweet God, thank you. It's really sweet. I I started taking classes about three or four years ago at this well un un well known not well known place, which I think is one of the best kept secrets in Los Angeles, called Emeritus College which is for seniors, and it's free. It's a free college for seniors, and it's an extension of Santa Monica College. And they have, without a doubt, the best art teachers I've met anywhere in L.A. Anywhere. Wow. Do you, do you get a... amazing art teachers. Do, do you have a web page for your art that you would like to share? Um, I do. It's kind of lengthy, but it's, I do. It's belinda com. Okay. Yeah, that way, you know, people can uh, go to that and uh, check out your work, and it's well worth checking out, absolutely. Oh, sweet. I think, thank you. I think your work is exquisite. It really is. Oh, thank you. I feel so young and new at it that I'm, I'm astounded by the response that I am getting, and it's sort of forcing me to get out of the closet. And, you know, I really love painting, so it's, I just really love it. I love it's the world. It's, you get into this zone when you're doing it, and you really wonder by the end who painted that. You know. And Mary, now, speaking of the zone, yeah. I, you know, I have to say that that's the key to life. I've written the book "Life Is an Improv." It's teaching you how to get into the, the zone. And uh, one of the things that uh, I, when I was, I had a scholarship to USC Film School. And it was given to me, I don't know if I shared that with you before, um, Greg, but um, T.G. Wilkerson Miles, who owned the Hollywood Reporter, okay. started uh, what is now Women in Film. And I was the youngest one, and they thought I could break through this glass ceiling that they called it, because women weren't getting directing jobs or producing. I didn't see the uh, the glass ceiling. When you're young, you think you can do anything. Invincible, right? You're right. We're invincible, right? So I ended up going to USC Film School, and I'm in there, and uh, I've always had a little tremor. Okay, just a little one since I was a kid. It's probably my energy, you know, filled with energy. So we were cutting in those days. To edit a film, you would cut it with a razor blade. 
Okay. And it was like a razor knife. Well, they were watching me thinking, oh, my God, she's going to cut off her fingers. <laughs> because I went back. And, and I was starring in films at the time, you know, little films and doing things. But all of a sudden, I also realized that the teachers, when they were teaching, they would say something. And I'd been on a lot of sets in my life because I started pretty young. I would go, wait a minute. That isn't necessarily true. Why are they saying that? And they had a lot of very booky knowledge. And, of course, the few teachers that had been in the business, which they have many more of them now, mm -hmm. uh, they, they really knew the films. They wouldn't give an axiom that this is how you do something. Because the key in film is, yeah, there's certain technology, technology things, but the rest of it, you better be able to spin on a dime. You don't know if it's going to rain or not and what That's you have right. to do. That's so right. bottom line, the... The, the, where I'm going with this story is once we started making all these videos, I learned Final Cut Pro. Mm -hmm. I'm a good storyteller because I've written a lot of scripts, a lot of things. I know how to tell a story. All of a sudden, I'm telling the story in the editing room. And we don't cut anymore. Hello, all you guys out there that are working Final Cut or iMovie. You just press a button and it happens. I'm in bliss, just like Belinda is with her artwork when I'm in the editing room. Because you're painting and drawing and changing. And it is amazing. So for all of you out there that are afraid to try making a movie or you have your iPhone, you want to get out there and do it, go do it. It's so easy today, I promise you. Nobody's going to cut your finger off. <laughs> So <laughs> that's, um, I wanted to share that because what, what you're hearing today, which is unfolding, is how you take your art wherever you are when you're a talent. You take it in your observation of life. You take it into everything you do because if you're flowing in that zone that Belinda's talking about and I'm talking about, you will find art everywhere. Mm -hmm. And now I want to share something else. This is a, I'm, I'm really promoting Belinda because I love her. She, I could never we say all do. Without her. <laughs> okay. She took me on a little tour of her secret garden. Okay. <laughs> and I want you to share that with everybody. Because oh, God. I, I, I do actually on Facebook. Sometimes I put, post pictures, but I do have a lot of things growing here. And I have not a very large yard, but I have just sort of got it, I don't know, spaced out in a way that I can do grapes and oranges and apricots and nectarines and peaches and plums and, you know, a million different kinds of tarragon and basils and thymes and everything and food, apricots and, I'm sorry, artichokes and got some uh, Brussels sprouts coming on, and <laughs> it's got a million different things growing. What was that one thing you had me taste? And I said, oh, my God. That was tarragon. That was the tarragon. It's amazing. It's, without a doubt, the best-smelling and tasting tarragon I've found anywhere. I, it's it's like an aphrodisiac. It is. I promised that I could take some home, didn't you? Oh, yes. I'm going to give you a whole bath. See, I just announced it so she can't change her mind. <laughs> this is the part you're going to miss out on, Greg. If you were here, you would get a basket, too. <laughs> you know, that would be great. You know, I've never been outside New Brunswick. <laughs> oh, good heavens. Now you have to travel. You have to. That's where all the education is. It's interesting. What's your closest? What's your closest province to where you are? Um, well, there's New Brunswick. Closest to New Brunswick, um, Halifax, Nova Scotia. You're way up there. Yeah, it's cold. But if you were going south, where would you want to go, Greg? I mean, there, you, that's Eskimo country, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know. It brings up one of my favorite movies, The White Dawn. Oh, God, I love that movie. Okay, go on. Well, we... Oh, Greg, we're, we're trying to get Greg on a trip here. <laughs> I was all your... Send him to Florida. you got to at least come to California. I mean... Well, I've had two interview guests tell me if I uh, if I ever if I'm ever in California, I have a place to stay. So. <laughs> wow. Well, there you go. 
and 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 we will bring you fruit from uh, her garden, and I'll I'll bring you a, a a serenade, and we'll have a good time. We love to have you out here. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, it's interesting. I just thought, too, I saw a picture of you, Belinda, on Facebook with uh, Melanie Kinneman, and I've had her on here as well. Yes, that was from a few years ago. We had gone up to Calgary. We oh. did, we did a, um, uh, a convention up there in Calgary. Yeah, so we were up there, well, not near you, but in your territory, I guess, a little a little closer than here. And, uh, yeah, it was Richard Brooker and Melanie, myself, and Eric Brandon, who is a friend from Germany. Mm. Oh, it was great. It was so much fun to go up there because actually in Calgary, well, in Lethbridge, Canada, outside of Calgary, I had shot, uh, this was 100 years ago, with Ronnie Howard and uh, Kathleen Hellman. Um, I shot a thing called The Locust. I don't. It was a TV movie of the week, okay. And it was it was really really awesome. It was, took place in the '40s, and it was really fun to do. Um, and that was the first time I had gone up there to Calgary. You know, it's so amazing when I hear the cities. When you're in our industry and you've worked a lot, I've been in Lethbridge working. I've, uh, I love I, I, I raised uh, uh, money for a film. You probably you know, the same crew people as I do. I bet you anything. What? I'm sure you know the same crew friends as I do. Oh, yeah, and amazing talent. Yeah, I, amazing. Were you always amazed that, I mean, we were thinking always, you know, no, the Canadian uh, techie people are fantastic. They're fabulous. And when I had done Food of the Gods, um, sure enough, there came all the crew people from Calgary. Wow. They were there now on Bowen Island off of Vancouver. Was, was Marjo in Food of the Gods? Yes. Oh, that's right. Okay, yes. good. Marjo and Pamela Franklin and right. Ida Lupino. <laughs> did, did, did they bring giant mouse traps? <laughs> 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 no, they didn't, actually. <laughs> it's actually from an H.G. Wells novel, the whole story. Yeah. But uh, Bert kind of, shall we say, interpreted, did his own interpretation. Okay, I have another one here, another Belinda thing. <laughs> sure, keep going. I love this. I'm roll, so I'm not giving up, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm walking around her house as we're speaking. And and I'm seeing these, like, amazing collections. And one of them she showed me earlier. When I walked in the door and I there's all these wonderful things, I pointed at one thing because, you know, I'm from Detroit and cars are my life. You know, I grew up in a car to doing commercials and reading my books and all those things. Anyway, I point to it and she says, oh, you won't believe this. <laughs> and it's like this blue, it's, I think it's a 57 Chevy. Is this right? 57 Chevy. 57 Chevy, turquoise. It's a stuffed little thing. And she got it from which prop house somewhere? A, a, a sale? <laughs> MGM was having an auction on their prop house. Yeah. And I was there with Nolte, actually. Nick Nolte and I had gone there. And he said, come on, BB, come with me, right? He used to call me BB King. They come on, we're going to go down there and see what we can buy. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to see a bunch of sets. And he said, no, no, they've got cool things, right? Well, that's what I saw was this 57. I said, oh, my God, that's my old car. And then so I had She to also has a little red one next to it. What's that? <laughs> that little chubby one looks like the car I have now, actually. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, it no, does. It, it, they were together, so I bought them together. That's really cute. I have a, a new car that's sort of red, and I loved it because... Back in the day, Candy Apple Red was the bomb. You oh, it's cute. The car is really cute. It's a nice car you have. Yeah, and it's a little... Well, everything in this house has a story, as well as, I'm sure, everything in your house. You know, we, you know, we, we're, we're eclectic people. You know, Mary Lynn was saying about this zone, you know, and the truth is, is like, I think this is maybe even Lou. I don't know where... But I have always believed that if I don't, you know, if I'm not acting, I'm beating something. If I'm not beating something, I'm shooting something. If I'm not shooting, I'm painting. If I'm not painting, I'm sewing. If I, do you know what I mean? Sure. I am a creative person, and if I don't have some creative way to use that, some way to go into the zone, I will go mad. <laughs> well, that's it, because most people are going mad if they say they're living lives 
of desperation, you know, silent desperation. It's, that's so, it's, it's sad to me because you have to believe and trust that, you know, the, the Corbin, the God inside of you is leading you in the right direction. You know, you have to trust the in, natural instincts of, and, the, and what gifts you were given. Well, you know, uh, Belinda, you and I both have had another gift, which is developing the gifts of others, like in children, teaching the acting, the things that I've done with them, too, is right. that uh, that's a spark. It's, uh, we're believers. You're right. That's, you're right. That is exactly right. We're believers. We believe, and so we help other people believe in their dreams and get there. From that's the right. We're the man. See, I, I believe one thing. If we touch somebody, and you know me, Belinda, I, I would slip on a banana peel to get a laugh. I think if I can pass a smile on every day to someone, then they can pass it to someone else. And someone said to me once, well, Mary Lynn, what do you think you're going to leave this world when you leave it? What would be on your epitaph? And my, what came to me... <laughs> This well, is a very long list. <laughs> she giggled her way into heaven. <laughs> and, and that, see, Belinda's giggling. She's going to do that as well. In other words, You're always going to be the floozy and Bobby Joe and the outlaw to me. <laughs> <laughs> you can't ever change that image. I can't change it. And no. boy, is that fun. Oh, I don't know if we shared this one, but because you weren't in that scene, but we were drinking beer from 6 a.m. on, tasting it, because that was part of the scene. Well, we were drinking 3-2, I if you know what that is. It has very little alcohol. They ran out of it, and they had to start giving us something that looked like beer, and guess what they called it? Beer! <laughs> <laughs> well, I was so smashed by the end of the day, because I don't drink much, and I was slurring the words, and they loved the take, because it was like, Honest? <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, and it was like they thought the news they should be, you know. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, no, I'm the cheapest junk around. I mean, two sips, it's over, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, in the fat lady, they always say the fat lady hasn't sung yet. But Linda and I are going to do some things together. We don't even know exactly what they are, but I trust you. They're on their way because today... <laughs> Was, today happens to be the holy day for, the, for um, the new year for the Jewish people. Okay. And on that new year, and I, I like to celebrate every single holiday that, that, that has positivity to it. And this one is about forgiveness, and it's about forgiving yourself for something you may have done through the year, forgiving others. It's an atonement in a way. But it's also a day of renewal that you look through your life for the past year and you see that today, and I offer this to everybody out there because we're all human, hey, aren't we? And we're in the human race, humanity. So the day of humanity, that this is a renewal, that you can just really step up and do the things you want. And the fact that I'm with Belinda today, and thank you, so much, Greg, for bringing us together that I believe that we connected in a way that we're going to bring forth some great things together. And Yeah, we got some plans in the fire. We do. Some logs in the fire. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I'll tell you something. Huh? It's all your fault. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you something. I've got um, I've got Mary Lynn Ross. Uh, I got you both on Facebook, um, Mary Lynn. I, I subscribe to your YouTube channel. So, um, well, and, thank you. And I have a YouTube channel of my own. I'm putting all my interviews on it right now. I've got 24 up, and you guys oh, are yeah. my you guys are my 50 second interview that I've done wow. since April okay, of 2015. Well. Well, you know, the more you have up there, people, it'll spread because I know how it, it goes. And uh, I, I congratulate you. I think it's great. I think uh, it's awesome. I think it's a very interesting new world out there te technologically. <laughs> well, I've got... Whatever that word is. <laughs> I've got you both. Can tell uh -huh. I'm not a, a right brain person. 
Yeah. Well, I've got both of your um, interviews from last year up on um, my YouTube channel. And um, Belinda's one-year anniversary just went by September 27th, and it'll be November 10th. Uh, it'll be the one-year anniversary, anniversary of yours, Mary. Wow, that's my birthday month. Yeah? Uh, little Scorpio. There we go. But, um, yeah, I did 20 interviews last year, and um, I'm about to double that this year. Like, um, since April 2015... I've done, you're, you guys are number 52, and I'm just overwhelmed. Like I said. Congra- congratulations, that's awesome. It is. I like being number 52. That sounds really good. We passed a half a century there. That's, I'll take that one. <laughs> it's interesting, like, I grew up with, like, class of 1984, and now when I watch it and know I've interviewed three people from it, it's just, like, I saw that way back in the 80s, you know? Amazing. That was your destiny, you see. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. and Okay, but oh, wait, wait. How old are you? Wait. I Hi. am I am 44 years old. 44. Okay, so you're like, yeah. You're, okay. So yeah. you were very young when you were watching. Yeah, I have, I have a brother and some cousins. Uh, well, I got two brothers, but my older brother that was baiting uh, us into watching some of this, uh, these violent movies, you know, and, but... Um, Class of 1984 is interesting because, like, I'm still in touch with you, Mary. I'm still in touch touch, touch with Stefan, and I'm still in touch with Lisa. In fact, Lisa, like I said, Lisa's manager has sent me a half a dozen um, interviews. And uh, mm-hmm. actually, I wanted to mention something to you, and I think I mentioned this to you last time. Um, I did one of those um, um, charity challenges for suicide slash depression. Because when Robin Williams committed suicide, um, somebody came up um, where they where they did the ice bucket challenge before. They do they're doing the doubt fire face challenge, and it involves, of course, taking a pie in the face and nominating three people. And Lisa Langwas accepted my challenge, and she did a video. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm glad you didn't tag me on that. Why not? Well, I've already done so many pie in the faces in my comedy career. You're so glad that I've been there. The archives, I've done them with Johnny Carson and you name it. And I did do one, if you remember, uh, Greg, that I did post a recent one. Oh, did you? Do you yeah. get any video of these? Yeah. I did it with the young kid. What are you talking about? Wait, what? Do you, what did you do? A pie in the face. Where on what? I, I, I'll I'll send it to you. Okay. I'll put it on Facebook. There. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, I I I uh, was uh, trying to help raise awareness for suicide depression, so I I threw the uh, invitation, the challenge out to people that I've interviewed, and I've I've had a lot of takers, but um, Lisa. Um, it was interesting because I was visiting a friend, and I noticed on my phone I had one missed call. And it was from California, and I was like, it was Lisa, so I called her back, and um, and she had done a video um, where she took a pie in the face for suicide depression, and uh, it's great. I got it on my YouTube page, and it's got the most hits of anything I put on there. Wow. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. So, but, so uh, That's really good, Greg. That's, that's, they never let me do comedy. Oh, you well, guess what? They yeah, have been a ch- you know something? Well, no, no, they did. I got to do Amazon Women on the Moon. Sorry, I did get to do one comedy. Yeah, did Cannonball? <laughs> oh, okay, that's kind of comedy, but we. Yeah, but you know what? You can do some great characters, and it depends on the writing whether it's going to be funny or not. You're one of the best character actors as I know, and. Uh, I would cast you in a comedy in five seconds. I love you, darling. I will. And guess what? I'm going on record. Okay. Write down the time. Greg, please, because you're the only one here that's organized. Okay. Write down the time and the date that Linda doing comedy with yours truly and others. There you go. I will. 
That would be really fun. I I already said yes. You see, did you hear that? Yes. I I already got a yes. So so I'm going with this one. I got this. I got it. All right. Are you going to have a pie-in-the-face scene in it? <laughs> no, thank you. No, we're past that, darling. I hope. Hopefully. I love that kind of humor. <laughs> I grew up with it. It takes way too long to do my hair. We're, we're diving in a vat of anti-aging cream. That was, there we go. That was in one of my scripts. Hey, it became 9 to 5, by the way. It was all bulbs, old lady. It's all bulbs and wrinkle cream that's, from now on anyway. That's what we'll do. <laughs> No, but um, yeah, I did that, and that was interesting um, to, and I threw that out there, and I've got some other takers on it. But yeah, if you got any videos of you doing that, uh, Mary, I'd love to see those. All righty, we'll do that. Yeah, but um, so you just posted a recent picture of that, or was it a video? Oh, guess what? Ah, uh, I just looked at the time. Oh, Greg. Yeah. I you know what happened? What? Um, I, calling here. Yeah, we're we're uh, we're at our, our limit because I I have a, a shoot this afternoon. Somebody's calling here. All right. Well, we probably should wrap this up. And um, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I just I realized it's two o'clock. Somebody's just calling, and she's got to go somewhere. So. Oh, well, okay. We didn't get to talk much about Bobby Joe, but. Uh, <laughs> oh, we'll be back. What's that? There you go. We'll be back. We'll be back. Well, yeah, you guys get to work with Wonder Woman. We'll be back. Well, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, Greg, a big hug to you, and thank you, thank you for your time and all your, you're wonderful, and we love you, love you. Absolutely. And uh, Mary, I still got to get an autograph from you. <laughs> all right. It's, I, I promise. It'll come. It'll be there. You as that lovely uh, Pearl Baker and <laughs> Bobby Joe and the Outlaw. Was you... that your, your name, Pearl? Yeah. You know that I found my nameplate that said Essie? I still have it. Wow. I still have it. Oh, I know. That warms my heart. I know. Well, I cried when I found it. I just found it like a few months ago, and I went, oh, good. Tears came down and everything. Wow. Daughter comes in. She's like, Mom, what? I said, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I know. Okay. This thing's got my phone. This this extension's now going down. Mine's going down. Okay. okay. Before okay, we go, day. can I get you Bye both? Now. Could, Take care. could you <laughs> both do a plug for my show before you go? What is it? Just uh, say that you're. Uh, this is Belinda Belansky and Mary Lynn Ross, and say okay, you're listening. Belansky. Yeah, and book. and say that you're um, listening to Greg Gilbert in New Brunswick, New Brunswick. Hi, Canada. I mean this is Belinda Belansky and Mary. Come on, Mary Lynn. Oh. Yeah, okay, and Mary Lynn Ross here, and we've been listening to Greg Gilbert in New Brunswick. Yeah, hey. <laughs> there you uh-huh. go. Well, you know what? I uh, some, some point, maybe next year, I'll have you two back on again. After all, Class of 1984 is turning 35 next year, Mary. Adios. There you go. <laughs> Well, God bless you, too. I, I absolutely love the both of you, and thank you so much for coming on here together and uh, blessing welcome. me. What's You're very welcome. Take care. We'll talk to you. We'll talk to you next year. <laughs> sure. God bless. Right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Yeah, bye.